down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Every spring, anglers look forward to the new fishing season and going after a variety of fish. Those can include panfish, coarse fish, and game fish. One of the most popular, though, is none other than the walleye. You know, one of the things that we're trying to do, because it's early in the spring, the walleye season just opened a few days ago, is look for weed lines. But the only problem is this year, because there's been a lot of high water in the Kawartha Lakes, the water's been up like three, four feet minimum, maybe even higher than that. Now, a lot of people call this cabbage, it's broadleaf pondweed. And you can see that it's got really long leaves. I call it corn stalks when it's growing in a big clump in deeper water. But we're actually coming out of about 16 feet of water and we're working into about eight feet. And this is what's growing on the edge. Oh, there's one. Nice perch. Yeah, it's panfish. That's a nice size perch for this area. Yeah, especially on that size of jig. Yeah, they got pretty colors this time of year with that clear water, Yep. clear conditions, nice sunlight. I wonder how many people come up just to target the panfish here in the summertime. There's quite a few people that just target panfish. You see a lot of them out there. And it's a great fish for the kids to catch. Get them started into fishing. That's right. And they do grow up. They just to be need a, a hook, big. hook a split shot, maybe a bobber, just you know, drift with the wind. Yep, live bait. Yeah, it works well. Um, little tubes, yeah, but perfect. these are pretty. You can tell by the pretty yeah. um, orange colors on those fins there. I'll let him go. If you walleye fish, you know that jigs are one of the best presentations you can use because most of the time, walleye are down in the water column. They can suspend a little bit off the bottom, but a lot of times, especially in shallower, clear lakes, they'll be down near the bottom. Some of my favorite jigs to use are ones that you can rig with a plastic grub. Now, what I've got rigged up on these rods, one is a finesse fish, and the other one is a shaker. These are made by Lunker City. You'll also notice that the heads are the finesse fish heads. Now, what I want to show you Something very critical is how you rig them. Because I do get people ask me, you know, how do you hook them on? Which side is up, which side is down? So this is an actual filet fish. It's about four and a half inches long. And what I've done, I've just nipped the head of it off so that when I put my finesse fish jig head on there, it's gonna have the same profile. This flat head will also help it to plane when I'm pulling it, it'll go to each side. And of course, the flat part or the dark, dark part is the back. So I'm gonna put it in right at that halfway point where the dark meets the light. I'm only gonna go back about three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna to try to come out with my hook right in the center of the finesse fish. Okay, see how it's in the center? Now look at these grub barbs. They're almost like a finishing nail. These really hold on your plastic grub well so that a fish can't tear it off. I'm gonna push it on and I'm gonna make sure that it's tight to the head and so that it's straight on the actual hook. So what you don't want is a curvature to the finesse fish. You want it to be nice and straight. You know, when you're fishing the Kawartha Lakes, you can get some surprises. I've got this big bluegill on. Look at the size of this thing. It actually hit a quarter ounce jig head with one of those, uh, this is a shaker. You can see the way it grabbed that shaker. It was hooked actually pretty well. Nice looking fish. Not our target species, but you know what? The Kawarthas have tons of these.
Walleye in the northern part of North America will do their spawning either in late winter, or early spring, depending on their geographic location. Now what happens is the smaller male walleye will usually stay around the spawning areas and they'll be caught in literally shallow water very close to where they were spawning. The larger walleyes, though the females, will move into deeper water and will start to disperse a lot faster. Wow, you were right, Mike. Look at nice, nice size fish. walleye. Oh my gosh, that's You know giant. what? He inhaled that husky jerk. Look at what a nice walleye. What a beautiful yeah. fish. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Mike. Oh, Mike, what a guy, nice. man. What a gorgeous walleye. Look at that. From Buckhorn Lake. Now this guy's bigger than the slot, but we're releasing all of our fish anyway. Here I'm gonna give you a kiss. Mm, you beautiful thing, you. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. This week I've got the pleasure of fishing with my good friend Mike Williams. I've fished with Mike in the past. Mike lives right on Buckhorn Lake. He's a professional guide and a tournament fisherman and he knows the lake like the back of his hand. And he's familiar with the changing conditions. I got a little bit of a line tangle, so you can see my reel here. I've got a loop, and uh, my cast got messed up. It only went about one third of the distance. So here's a tip. So I'm gonna hit the release button, and I'm gonna pull the line until I get to where it's stuck. Because what happens when you get a uh, line tangle, the line actually for some reason isn't in line, it's over a wrap and it goes down into the line and then it kicks back and you get a massive tangle and it's tight. So if you try to pull on it like this, it's gonna actually make it worse. So what you gotta do is hit the release and move the spool back and try to get the loop where it's created and try to loosen it. When you do that, you can see it's loose in there. Now you can pull very gently on the line forward. Never pull too tight. And then make sure that you pull it so all of the tangled line comes off. Once it comes off, just hold it with your hand and reel it back on. That way you'll be able to go on fishing. If you use a bait caster, you will get a backlash. I guarantee it, sooner or later. I think I got a nice one on here, Tal. All right, let me get my line in. Oh yeah, nice fish. So what's with these good sized walleye? That's awesome. I think the slot limit that the ministry introduced there a few years it's back really is, is really helping these Good. fish come along here in the Corthus. The population was down for a while, Yep. but they're starting to make a comeback here now. Good. There. I want to be gentle with it. Now, because this fish is over the slot, definitely, but we're gonna try the best catch and release tactics. So Mike, I'm gonna let you the do net. the honors. You're gonna, okay, and I'll go down yep. there head first, that always tells me that they're very aggressive. So it's not hooked too bad. I mean, it was hooked well enough that Mike had no chance of losing it. But what I want to do is take the hooks out and you can see I'm keeping it in the water without getting hurt. Okay, look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous Kawartha walleye? Nice long fish. We've kept it in the water the whole time. Look at that gold sheen. Look how thick he is. I know what you're thinking. For those of you that like to eat walleye, you'd like to eat this guy, but you know what? He's gonna breed, whether it's big, male or a female, but that's what you should be doing. So even though we're using a lure, like this particular twitch bait, that's got three trebles, you can see this is like a, a naturalized perch color finish. Uh, it's got three trebles. So unless the fish is hooked deep or you gotta look into its mouth, like last night we caught one fish, it was about 26 inches long, that we had to literally hold so I could see down to get the hooks out and we released it unharmed. But the best thing is to release it right away, no unnecessarily holding it out of the water. And even though we're doing a TV show, you got a really good look at that fish in the water. And now it's gonna go on very healthy to breed. And we're gonna have more little walleyes for everybody to enjoy. Early in the year, especially when you're dealing with cold water conditions in high water, it can really change the location of the fish. So one of the key times to catch them shallow is about an hour and a half before sunset. The only thing is you have to be on the right spot, be on those points or shorelines that are very close to the main lake basin and those large shallow weed flats. Come 
Mike, what have you got on? Got a nice quartz lakes walleye on here. I just got them by the back hook. Okay, try to swing them around on this side. Okay. How do you like that rod, by the way? I love light this enough? rod. It's really light and it's, you can feel everything on it. Yeah. We're using that 10 pound leader. I see what you mean. Are we gonna lose it? No, perfect. Nice walleye. Nice slot size walleye. Okay, that means that he's a keeper. That's a nice fish. So we've got the lure in the net. He unhooked himself. All right. Okay, Mike, here's your prize. <laughs> Show everybody. Thank you. That's a nice keeper fish, but we're gonna be releasing it. Smile, say hi to everybody. You know, look, Great Mom. Great Corth Lakes walleye. Look, Mama, I can catch him. <laughs> yeah, nice fish. <laughs> Thanks. And he's gonna be ready to go, because we didn't have him out very long, just a few seconds. There you go. There you go. Okay, high five. High Good five job. to the guy. Nice. Good job. Early in the season, especially in northern lakes, there's very little weed growth. And especially if the water's high, those weeds can be back by a week or two. So look for any kind of weeds because walleye in many lakes like to feed on perch. And the perch and some of the other panfish like bluegill and small sunfish and rock bass will be where there's any weed growth because that's where their food is. Can you tell it's windy? Let me try. There, a little bit. One thing we've been dealing with is being limited to where we can fish because of the wind. Perfect, that's a good size fish, you know. Nice size wallet. Yeah, uh, barely fits in the net. Perfect, you know what, you hooked them good. We're not gonna have to handle them too bad. So that's excellent. Now, yeah, I'm gonna keep the net there in the water. Can you grab it with your right hand by the tail? Yep. Sorry for all the instructions, okay. just like that, and close to the water. That fish has gotta be like 25, 26 inches. Yeah, that's a beauty. What a goal, Mike, what a nice release. And you didn't even slide in. <laughs> well, there's not much water with our pack. He's a boat, you guys are that, that made me jump. Now, I'm very thankful that we've got an electric trolling motor that just by the touch of the control, I can put it on an anchor mode. So right now, we're actually holding in a very specific spot because it locks into a GPS. So if you look down, you'll see on the sonar that we're in about eight to 10 feet of water, we're right on a weed line. It's very difficult, even with a good quality electric trolling motor, to hold on to a spot when it's so windy. You're constantly gonna go back and forth. So the technique that we've been doing is putting on the anchor mode, cast into an area, much like you would if you were to lower an anchor out of a smaller boat. And then when we're done fishing that area fan casting, I just touch the button as I'm gonna do now, and you'll see the boat swing around right now. And as soon as we go down about maybe 20, 30 feet, I'm gonna push the anchor mode again, and it's gonna lock again. So right now it's gonna lock. If you watch the electric trolling motor, you can see it go left and right, and it's looking for the exact waypoint off the satellite. This week, we have the pleasure of making Scotsman's Point Cottage Resort our home base on beautiful Buckhorn Lake on the Kawartha chain of lakes, Ontario. This location is unique since it gives us access to three Kawartha Lakes, Pigeon, Shimong, and Buckhorn Lakes, and also hosts the FLW Tour. The resort offers 25 lakefront housekeeping cottages on a 12-acre point within an hour's drive from Toronto near Peterborough, Ontario. Visitors can enjoy the excellent fishing, spacious dock facilities with boat rentals, bait, and a fish cleaning hut. In addition to fishing and water sports, there's shopping and golfing nearby. If you're looking for a great family location, to spend your holidays or you're a serious fisherman and you want to go after all the major warm water game fish, Scotsman's Point Cottage Resort is the place to go. You know what, I'm going to explain to you how easy the Raymarine Dragonfly is to use because I use it all the time. It's the one that's connected to my electric trolling motor so it has the transducer right under my feet so I can see exactly what's going on. Let me show you. The first thing I do is push the back key. That's right here. Now you can see that at the top of the sonar, I've got all my windows. I can go left and right with this cursor that's got the OK in the center of it. But right now, I'm just gonna leave all those windows up top and I'm gonna just move the cursor to the left so that you can see that I've highlighted the chart window where I can actually see the map of what's underneath us. Now by pushing the plus or the minus, I can actually zoom in or out of my map as far as I want. If I use the cursor that's around the okay, 
I can actually move the map left and right, the chart. Right now I'm on a split screen. I can see the hydrographic chart and also the down vision. Let me go to the sonar window. So there, one, two, there's a sonar window. See, it says sonar. I'm gonna push okay. Now this is the classic sonar window that a lot of times fishermen would use once they find a spot that they want to fish, they don't need the chart anymore. So they just want to concentrate and see exactly where the weeds are or where the fish are. I personally prefer the down vision window because I think it's a little clearer and it gives you more accuracy. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Williams from Williams Outfitters. We're here out in the Gorth Lakes, Buckhorn Lake to be exact. We're fishing out of Scotsman's Point Resort, which is a great resort to visit when you're in the Kawarthas. I was out with the tallow today. Conditions were pretty tough out there, but we were able to find some fish, target some walleye. And um, if you're ever faced with tough conditions when you're fishing, look up Williams Outfitters and we'll hook you up. Walleye are one of the best tasting northern fish and usually if you find one fish you can find a whole school and if you work it you can catch them. The key to locating them is understanding their seasonal movements. For example this week we're faced with very early season conditions. The season just opened. We have high water levels and we have storm fronts moving through. So understanding where the fish are going to be feeding in the middle of the day is a key to consistently catching them. Mike, I am amazed that under these conditions, we're still able to like stay on the spot and get fish. Did well, you get a look at it? That motor guide spot. Isn't that amazing? It's we crazy. feel like we're anchored right yep, now, and anchored. it's just uh, all done by the electric. Look at gorgeous walleye. Okay, get him back up on top. I hope so. Almost, yeah. No, I think you got him hooked pretty good. Oh, one hook. Got him. Nice. This one's got a bit of a scar on the side. Come on. See, I got one hook out the net. Oh, look at this. Got there it. Go. There we go. There's your lure. It's not even in the net. I'm going to lean over and show them the mark that's on the tail. If you want to put that, you see that mark? I'm just going to hold it in the water. Look at the tail mark right there. Something took a, a go at it. Okay, I'm just going to extend them out. What a gorgeous creature. Beautiful fish. Look at Right here in the Kawartha Lakes, we're fishing Tri Lakes. This happened to be Buckhorn. We're out of Scotsman's Point Resort. And you know what? He's going to be ready. Watch. Beautiful. Perfect release. The Kawartha Lakes, Ontario are situated on the Trent Severn Waterway. This is a waterway that connects Lake Ontario to Lake Huron and goes from Georgian Bay right down to Trenton, Ontario. You know, it doesn't matter whether I'm trailering a boat or I'm just going to my fishing spot. I really rely on my truck to get me there and I'm really big on diesel engines. We have a diesel car and not, this is a diesel truck. And believe it or not, I'm trying to get a million miles, not a million kilometers, a million miles on this engine. And to do that, I gotta take care of it. And I really believe in using a fuel additive that keeps the engine clean and everything running smoothly. Now I have Ryan with me, he's from Blue Chem, and he's gonna tell you about one of the best fuel additives that you can use if you have a diesel truck. Ryan, why don't you tell him about it? Thanks, Italo. The reason we want to make sure our diesel engines are well looked after and taken care of is because they are always under a high pressure to deliver the fuel. What we want to make sure of is that we have proper clean injectors to ensure a proper atomized fuel so we have the mileage that our diesels are telling us we're going to get on a regular, everyday basis. Diesels tend to need a little bit more love and care because we want to make sure that they have clean injectors on a regular basis. So you should use a diesel system super clean every three to six months, depending on how often you drive, so that you too can reach the Million Mile Club. Twitch baits were great for a variety of fish, especially walleye early in the season when the water's clear and the fish are down along the weeds. But I find that using the right action rod and having the right line setup is really important. So what I'm using is a medium light action bait casting rod. And on it, I've got it spooled with 20 pound test braid. So the braid is very important because the braid has no stretch. So whenever you move the rod two or three feet, that lure is gonna move two or three feet when you're doing a twitching presentation. But because the line is this green color, I like to use a fluorocarbon leader. So this is a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader and it's about three feet long. 
I like using the leader for two reasons. One, it's clear, so the fish don't see it. Two, because it has some memory, it's quite stiff. If my lure happens to tumble as it's going through the air and it's windy, there's less of a chance of the line getting caught onto the actual hooks. If I was to tie the braid directly to the lure, it's so limp that the wind could actually blow it onto the hooks. And then my, my cast is messed up and I gotta reel in and recast again. Now I get a lot of questions about making the connection. You could use a swivel, but I don't like using a swivel because number one, it can catch weeds and stuff and it can also get caught in the tip if you reel it in too much. So I've used a blood knot and you can see that I've trimmed it down really tight. If I was using heavier fluorocarbon, the blood knot wouldn't work because it would be too bulky. But going from about 20 pound braid to 10 pound fluorocarbon, it works extremely well. So using that fluorocarbon leader gives you also a little bit of stretch. You can see if I pull it, there's a little bit of stretch. So all good reasons to use this line setup when you're trying to manipulate a lure so that it looks natural. And if you happen to hit a weed because of the braid and the no stretch, if you give it a good rip, the weeds will probably come off your lure. You know, we're having a great time here at Scotsman's Point Cottage Resort, fishing Buckhorn Lake, catching lots of walleye. Mike Williams is a great guide, and Dwayne Jacobs, he's operating the camera boat, so he's right beside us. And these guys tag team and really can put you on to fish. We've had some interesting weather out there with the wind blowing, man. But right now, we're gonna enjoy a shore lunch. We released all of our fish, even the panfish, not just the walleye, but uh, Mike and Dwayne have some fish that they're gonna be cooking up. And we're gonna have the classic beans, potatoes, there's a special wild rice dessert that they're doing, and of course, a fresh fish fry. So we've got about 20 people joining us that have been fishing. But the only problem is right now it's calm. It was really windy earlier. They're calling for chance of thunderstorm, so there's clouds moving in. But we've got a tent set up. So come on up and join us for shore lunch. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. This year, it's particularly interesting to fish for walleye because we're the first week of opening and the weather has been a little bit crazy, lots of strong wind. It's really high on this particular lake that we're fishing buckhorn. It's, the water's clear and we've got really bright sunny skies. So one of the strategies that Mike said we should be doing is to cover these large weed flats that are anywhere from about seven to eight feet deep, but the weeds can come up as shallow as three feet or as deep as seven, eight feet. 